Hello again Internet, Astro with Roro here. Before we get into my thoughts on the ASIA Mini, let's have a quick discussion first. ZWO sent me this ASIA Mini along with a filter wheel and an ASI 2600mm so that I could test the ASIA platform properly. These items are not mine to keep, but ZWO has given me the option to purchase them if I wish to. I did not receive any money to make this video and ZWO has had no input on it. I have, however, had a chance to ask them a few questions, which I'll share with you later on in this video. Let's start with the basics then. This device is very small. In fact, you can see it's not at all out of place when it's attached to my RedCat 51, and it fits really nicely in the finder bar. I've tested this device during a number of different nights, including some that were very dew heavy, and it handled all the conditions well. It was reliable and did everything I asked of it, although maybe not as fast as I would have liked. It has a good selection of ports. In fact, every single side is just jam-packed with them. You get four 12-volt power plugs, four USB 2 ports, a DSLR shutter release port, and a USB-C port for data transfers to your PC. Do be aware that this USB-C port is also limited to USB 2 speeds. So if you take a large amount of images or videos, it may take a while for that data to be transferred out. In fact, it's my first real gripe with the ASIA Mini. The lack of a USB 3 speed output meant that I was limited to 30 megabytes a second when copying files to my computer. I found this a little confusing as on the website it states much faster speeds are achievable. However, I asked the WO and they confirmed that while the internal drive can reach these higher speeds, the PC port itself, unfortunately, cannot. While these data speeds might be low, so is the ASIA Mini's power draw. One benefit of this ASIA platform versus a mini PC or a laptop is just how power efficient it is, with one caveat that we'll get into shortly. Here you can see how the ASIA Mini compares with my Miele Quieter 3, with average idle and under load power use. The under load readings were taken during plate solving, just for your reference. As we can see, the ASIA Mini is indeed very power efficient, and this may mean that you can get away with a smaller battery, further improving your portability. However, there is one potential issue with the power consumption of the ASIA Mini in that it has no ability to control the power of dew strips internally. If you plug in a dew strip to one of the power outlets or a USB plug, then that strip will run at 100% power unless you have an external power controller. One other thing to mention here is that if you have an older style dew strap like this one with an RCA plug, you'll need to purchase or make an adapter as the ASIA doesn't have dew ports. I made this adapter myself for about $5 from parts from a local hobby store that takes it from the RCA down to DC. Do be aware though that the power strip will still run at 100% power because there's no controller built in here. A downside of having such a power efficient device is that things will take longer to run than on a more capable machine. In general, I didn't find this too much of an issue, but sometimes plate solves could take an uncomfortable amount of time to complete. This is something to be aware of if your plan jumps between targets a lot or you're changing your filters often as that's where this most comes into effect. Generally, a plate solve or star detection task would be complete within about 10 seconds, but occasionally, as you can see here, this could balloon out to over 30 or even 40 seconds. In contrast, my Quieta 3 never takes more than 2 seconds to complete any of these, and this difference could add up overnight if it's occurring often. 
In fact, let's talk about a gripe I have with autofocus. The ASIA platform has a good autofocus routine. In fact, it didn't fail on me at all and it always provided a sharp result. However, it is not fast. Unfortunately, there's no option to add in filter offsets, which means you must do a full autofocus routine every time you change your filter. This is usually fine if you're imaging in LRGB because you can take short exposures, but it can be painfully slow when you're using narrowband filters. The ASIR actually does two autofocus routines in the one. First it completes a course run, then it comes back and does a fine run to really hone in the details. For me, I found this meant it was taking about four minutes to complete the whole autofocus routine, which when you need to run it, each SHO filter, especially if you're doing multiple targets in a night, can really eat into your imaging time. So ZWO, please think about adding in a filter offset option if you can, so that we can you know, focus just using the luminance filter, which would be nice and fast. Or if you can't do that, maybe try and allow us to set different gain settings for each filter so that we can shorten the required exposure length on narrowband filters without impacting the gain setting that we actually take our regular photos with. Once you're on target and focused up, the ASIA will just start guiding and generally it does a really great job here. It would be nice to have access to some of the more advanced features of PHD2, which is what's running the guiding under the hood, so that power users could tweak it further, but I did get very good guide results, so I'm not going to complain too much. Before we take a look at some image results I got with this setup, let's take a step back and run through how I set up my image routine. The ASI Air has a built-in planetarium, which you can use to find targets. In general, I found this to be fine, although I did notice that many objects were missing their friendly names and were only searchable using their NGC or other number designations, which would be great to see improve with an update to make it even more user-friendly. The ASI Air also has what it calls a tonight's best list of objects that it thinks would be good for you to image. However, I found this a little bit hit and miss. For example, the top recommendation was the sun, which I'm really hoping isn't visible during my night's imaging sessions. To be fair, this is an experimental feature, so I'll give Zedua a pass on it since it's still under development. Once you've found a target that you like, you can add it to your plan and then decide what images you want to sequence. Once your plan is ready to go, the ASIA just takes the reins and begins plate solving, autofocus routines, and soon your images will be flowing shortly after. Do be aware that once you have started your plan, you're not able to easily make changes. If you want to edit the amount of images that your hydrogen alpha filter takes, for example, you need to stop imaging and reset the plan. This means the ASIN no longer knows how many exposures you've taken for each of your filters, and you'll have to manually adjust the plan to start it back up where you left off. This is a real bummer, and I hope that they can address this at some point, but they did confirm that unfortunately, this has to be done if you wanna make changes at the moment. So based off that, for now, make triple sure you have set up your plan correctly before you hit go. A strong point I want to touch on with the ASI Mini is how impressive the Wi-Fi is. The platform allows you to choose between 2.4 and 5G spectrums, which is great if you're trying to avoid interference. I stayed with the default 2.4 band and had no issues easily connecting to the device from around 20 meters away on my phone. I did notice some drop in download speeds at one point when I was about 10 meters away and behind a little fibro wall, but I think that's to be expected and isn't all that unusual. The 5G Wi-Fi option may give you some extra speed if you're looking to use it to download images, but I would expect the range to drop significantly due to the shorter wavelength of the 5G band. One cool feature is that you can set up station mode on the ASI Air. This will allow your device to connect to a Wi-Fi network of your choosing rather than using its own. You can then say set it to your home Wi-Fi and since home routers are usually much more powerful, it can allow you to access the ASI Air from anywhere on that network, which is great. ZWO has also thought a lot about this implementation as if the assigned station Wi-Fi isn't detected, then the ASI Air will start up its own. So you don't need to worry about toggling this option on and off 
if you image from home, and also on the road. In fact, my only complaint is that the factory set password is the same for all ASIA minis and potentially all ASIAs out there. It's also really easily guessable. And this is really a bit of an oversight and could actually be a real security risk as anyone that knows this can join any ASIA network. As such, I would highly recommend you change this password as soon as you set up your device for the first time to give you that extra security. Now that we've covered all of the basics, let's chat about who I think this device is good for and what some of the final pitfalls and issues I have with it are. To begin, let's talk about beginner astrophotographers who own a DSLR and an equatorial mount, maybe even a telescope, and are looking to start their journey into more deep space astrophotography. This device has an easy to learn and friendly interface, and it can definitely take out the pain of setting up your own mini PC with all the drivers and software being taken care of for you. It covers the basic needs for setting up and imaging, but it does come with one major drawback. This is something that I'm sure ZWO will not like me saying, but I feel it's very important to discuss. The ASIA platform is built using open source software, but has artificial barriers that restrict the cameras and accessories that you are able to use with it. As such, if you're a beginner astrophotographer who decides to purchase this device, just keep in mind that you will be locked into buying ZWO cameras going forward if you wish to continue using the ASIA, and that's deep space and guide cams. But what if you're no longer a beginner? Or what if you already own a ZWO cooled camera and a ZWO guide camera? What if you're at maybe an intermediate level? Well, if you're looking for a simple and reliable device to run your equipment and you already fit into the ZWO ecosystem, then you'll probably really enjoy using the ASI Air. This is especially so if you're looking for the most portable setup you can get, even if you're a pretty advanced astrophotographer. Of course, that walled garden is still there and this could impact your decisions when you're next looking to upgrade, which I am sure is part of ZWO's long-term plan. Finally, let's chat about who this device is not suited for. Okay, firstly, this platform will not work if you don't own a ZWO deep space camera and guide camera. Unless of course your mount doesn't need guiding, in which case you don't need to worry about guide cameras. And as far as I can tell, it also doesn't support any CCD cameras at all. It also will not support many third party accessories that you may want to use like camera rotators or flat field generators. Many of these require custom drivers or integrations that simply aren't available in the limited in-app sequencer, which is a bit of a shame. As such, you would be better off using a more full featured platform for your imaging. I do hope that ZWO continues to improve this platform though, and ideally they would open it up and allow more devices to work with it, especially third parties. I think that a gesture like this not only would greatly improve the platform, but would give them a big boost to community sentiment and show that they're confident enough in the, the quality and the performance of their product lineup without the need to artificially restrict competitor devices from the platform. Finally, I'll leave you with some images I captured with this equipment. Let me know your thoughts on the ASI Air if you own one, and if I missed anything, drop a comment below. If you like this video, then consider subscribing, or you can follow me on Patreon, which is linked in the description, to help support this channel and my work. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, clear skies.